Hey everyone, thank you for tuning in. This is UAV Flyer here with you. And uh, what I have in front of me is a Scarab V3 550mm from Hobby King Hexacopter. FR4 frame, aluminum CNC arms. And uh, bear with me here because this is like my first review. I've never done a YouTube video review before. I'm not really good at video editing and uh, I do appreciate your patience here with me. Uh, I'll do the best I can. So this is a new release from Hobby King and it is a 550 millimeter frame and for those of you who don't know that's the size is measured from motor shaft to motor shaft and that would be 550 millimeters and I couldn't one thing I didn't understand is if it was an X6 or if it was an H6 but I set it up through my Hobby King KK 2.15 board is an H6, and X6 did the same thing. I didn't see any difference in flight, but anyway, maybe somebody else uh, knows more than I do. But uh, I just wanted to basically go over some things on this thing, and the differences between this and the other ones that you see online. Well, supposedly Hobby King took this design from the designers, and I guess they just mass-produced it. And it's an FR4 frame, and FR stands for fire resistant fiberglass frame, CNC aluminum arms, and it's about 650 grams empty. I'm about 3.5 pounds right now with the battery. I'm running a 3 cell 4500 milliamp 30C, and I'm running uh, the Multi Star 2213 980 kV motors on this thing, and they're Output is about 165 watts at 15 amps, three cells. Each motor is drawing about 5 amps. So 30 amps total amp draw, and I'm getting about 7 to 8 minutes on the pack. And it's actually coming back down at about 11.6 volts, so which is very good. And I'm running the RX610 receiver, the orange receiver with the satellite, KK2.15 board, APC8. 4.5 props, and as I said, I'm running these, uh, well, these are Hobby People 30C 4500 milliamp uh, three cells, and they weigh about 305 grams a piece. 18 amp uh, Turnergy Plush speed controllers, and I've always had really great success with Turnergy Plush controllers. The build was kind of interesting. It uh, isn't very, the instruction manual isn't very uh, descriptive. And I wanted to go over one little thing with the people that are trying to build this. Well, this is the instruction manual. It's just one piece of 8.5 by 11 piece of paper that's in black and white. And the detail's not very good on there. But it's pretty self-explanatory for the most part. And there are some things that uh, need to be, that I found are incorrect. But one of the things are here... I've labeled the steps. This is on the back side of it. Now, this is step one, step two, step three, step four. And then on the back side of it, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Now I didn't label these because these once you get this far, this is easy. This is a piece of cake. So step six here, you actually have to flip it over to get to step seven. Just to let you guys know. I'm going to get a little closer to the camera. So this is step six. And my finger's in the way. And that's step seven. So step six, step seven. And you actually have to flip it over here to do the next part of the build. And they don't specify that. And that is uh, where it got confusing. Well, at least for me, I'm not that. I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed, I guess. But I just wanted to clarify that for people who uh, may be on that and maybe are having the same trouble. But for anybody who's going to build this thing, it makes it a lot easier. And then also, when you get to step 11 down here, Oh, they specify you have to use these uh, these standoffs that are 5.5 millimeters. Well, you actually have to use the 13 millimeter standoffs in the area. They're not 5.5. If you use the 5.5s, it won't go together properly, which is weird. I don't know why they say the 5.5s, but I did it with... There was you, you get enough parts to build this thing. You should have no parts left except for the spare screws. You do they, It does come with spare screws, but on step 11... It's the 13 millimeter standoffs, not the 5.5. I just wanted to clarify that. And everything else is pretty, pretty self-explanatory. Well, it looks like we experienced some technical difficulties with my camera. It seems to only want to die when you actually want to use it. 
So, we're back. I don't know for how long. Well, anyway, as I was saying, so I'm running the KK 2.15 board. My P&I gains for Ailen Ryan Elevator is 46 and 14, respectively. And my P&I gains for Rudder is 59 and 60, respectively. And I'm still experimenting with that. It's still a work in progress, but with the stock settings, it did not want to fly. It was very, very unpredictable and uncontrollable. It's getting a lot better, and I'm really new at this. And this is really, this is my second build, multi-rotor build. This is my first hexacopter build. I got a few flights on it. I'm going to take it out again and see how it flies. I just tuned, I, I've been fine-tuning these gains by one degree, one increments, increments of one because I was going 5 and 10s, as people would say online, and that was way too much. So I got down to increments of 1, that's where I'm at now, and we're going to take it out and go fly it. Hey everyone, UEV Fly here, and uh, we're out at the field here, well, actually it's a park, and I was told that they're going to ban these in the local parks here in Southern California, so until then, I'm going to continue to fly. So this is the Scarab V3 550, and we're going to fly it. I just tweaked the PI, PI settings, the uh, per, proportional and the integral settings for aileron elevator and rudder. And as I stated earlier, one degree increments is all you need now. I, I've been reading online, people are saying five, ten degree increments in the changes, and that was really significant. One degree is making the difference. So we just tweaked it again. We're going to fly it real quick. This is a new battery, so I don't know how long it's going to last. I'm going to fly for three to four minutes and just to show you how it flies and how it looks. I found this is really easy to uh, identify front and back with, where I had real trouble with quads and stuff, because it's not really symmetrical, I guess. And the really nice thing about it is, and I did not explain it in the previous uh, video, was the front end. It's got the vibration dampening camera mount, and it's got the cutout for the GoPro. So, it's got the lens cutout, it's got grommets that hold the camera mount in place. Well, there you have it. That was the Scarab V3 550 from Hobby King. Well, everything on this thing is actually from Hobby King. So, interesting, huh? Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.